Hello students, uh, in this video we're going to preview uh, graphing uh, sine and cosine functions. This is going to be uh, a review of terminology that you learned for the first time in Algebra 2. It also ties in really closely to physics classes. If you are taking those, you're going to see some of the same terms be used a lot. All right. So what we have here are a couple of basic graphs. Uh, this is a basic graph of y equals sine of x. I'm going to make sure these color match with the bottom. Um, and on the right side, we've got y is equal to cosine of x. What I'd like you to notice from this is that the graph of sine of x, if we're looking at what we're going to call one period, starts at the middle of our graph, goes up, comes back down to the middle, goes down to the bottom, and back up to that midline again. For cosine, uh, the graph is always going to start at the top, go down to the middle, go down to the bottom, we sometimes call it the trough, back up to the middle, and back up to that peak. Graphs of sine and cosine are really helpful for us to use to understand the world around us because they're what we call periodic graphs. These graphs repeat themselves, and I included a much longer view of both graphs down below. I use the same colors, red for sine, blue for cosine, um, so that that's our cosine friend, and this is our sine friend. And the other thing that I'd like you to notice from this uh, is that the sine and cosine graphs are exactly the same, except they're kind of like a horizontal shift over from each other. You might notice that going from the top of the cosine graph to the top of the sine graph is shifting pi over 2 units to the right. In fact, the whole thing is shifted that amount. We call that a phase shift uh, because these graphs uh, would be what we call in phase if they were on top of each other. And when you shift one of them, they become out of phase, which means that they don't line up anymore. But they are the same graphs. They just moved a little bit from each other. And uh, that's going to both make things easier and a little bit harder when we're talking about these because any equation that uses sine of x could also be done using cosine of x. It's kind of like when we had right triangle trig. Uh, in fact, it's exactly like when we had right triangle trig. And depending on the information that you knew, you could always switch between sine and cosine if you switch the angle in the triangle. And that's what's happening here as well. You can switch between the two as long as you shift over by pi over 2 or 90 degrees. In terms of some of the parts of the trig graph, uh, this is a kind of a random graph uh, that I put together to make this a little bit easier to see. We're going to talk about four different characteristics with these graphs. Uh, for this particular graph, I'm going to talk about one full cycle of this curve. And the easiest thing for us to do is to identify going from a peak, I'm just going to put a box around that, to another peak. You could do the same going from a trough to a trough or a point in the middle to another point in the middle, but you got to be a little bit careful with that one so it goes in the same direction. Uh, so the midline is the horizontal middle of the graph. We tend to use the letter D to represent this. Uh, and I'm going to look for between the top of this graph and the bottom of the graph. So I've got 3 and negative 1. The midline is going to be right in the middle of those points. And if I draw a horizontal line at positive 1, we can also see this kind of cuts this graph right down the middle. Uh, the function that I'm choosing to look at here, going from peak to peak, is looking at this as though it's a cosine function. One of the things that I like to do here uh, is to just do a quick shape check uh, for my graphs. And I've got a graph of sine and cosine there so that we can uh, quickly decide which one we want to use. Especially when you're trying to come up with an equation for a graph, often cosine is an easier one for us to use because finding the top points is pretty easy for us. All right. This second characteristic that we're going to talk about with this graph is amplitude. 
amplitude is the distance from the midline to the peak or the midline to the trough. In other words, how high is this going from the middle to the top? So this is the number that we assign amplitude. And in this case, the amplitude going from 1 to 3 for my y values would be 2. Uh, we often call this the a value. Uh, and we're going to see these again in a few minutes. Uh, and just to kind of clarify, here, the midline would be at a height of 1. So y equals 1 would be that midline. The period... Uh, is the horizontal distance. In physics, you'll <clears throat> call this time. So the horizontal distance for one full cycle. And the easiest way for us to do that here is to look at where my values are going from the peak to the peak. This is going to be one period. And here, we're going from pi to 5 pi. So the calculation we're going to do is take those x values and subtract those. So 5 pi minus pi to see how far apart they are. And 5 pi minus pi, for this case, is 4 pi. For both sine and cosine, the natural period, the period of the mother function, I like the phrase natural period, that sounds good, uh, so if we're just looking at sine or cosine on their own, that period is going to be 2 pi. In trying to figure out how to build these equations, we're always going to refer back to that 2 pi thing in order to uh, make sure that we can get accurate numbers for our equations. And then finally, the phase shift is how much we've shifted horizontally. Uh, the challenge here is that any of these graphs could have multiple phase shifts. It depends on both which function that we're using, if we're doing a positive or a negative one, and some other characteristics. Since I identified cosine as this graph, just kind of arbitrarily, cosine should begin its cycle at x equals 0. And instead, we're beginning our cycle a little bit to the right. We're beginning our cycle at x equals pi. So this is our phase shift. And in this case, x equals pi. But I'm going to put a little star there because depending on what we had chosen, we could have had different phase shifts. If I wanted to start my graph at x equals 5 pi, that's OK. That can be my phase shift too. Or at x equals negative 3 pi. That could be my phase shift, too. Uh, because these graphs repeat over and over and over again, uh, there are going to be different possibilities that we can get for these. All right, that takes us through the basic terminology and the basic shapes for cosine and sine. Again, hopefully this is uh, a nice refresher for you.